Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, a film critic for Filmbook. Today I will be reviewing Totally Under Control. Totally Under Control is directed by Alex Gibney, Ophelia Haritwanian, and Suzanne Hillinger. It's written by Alex Gibney and stars Alex Azar, Charlie Baker, Scott Becker, and Tyson Bell. Now let's say it like now let's say it like it is. Reviewing documentaries are tough because you've got to talk about it as a movie and not report on your thoughts or opinions on the topic of the film. So in this review, because this is a hot topic, I'm going to completely separate my own biases, whether they align with the film or not, and just talk to you like it's a movie. So let's get to it. Any film that starts off with 2020 is like opening a horror movie. <laughs> and let's not fool ourselves. Most documentaries are basically like urban horror movies. They're psychological thrillers that are meant to disturb you and, and look twice at the world around you. Now, I do appreciate that in this movie, they, they tell us straight up that this was difficult to film a COVID movie during COVID. And I liked how they showed the people being interviewed were behind tarps and they had the COVID cam, as they called it, poking in between the holes. And there was an interesting take. They were able to show us a little bit behind the scenes of making the movie during the movie. Now, let's be real here. You're not going to find a documentary that's not biased and leaning heavily to one side. That's why this documentary was made. That's the passion. That's the fuel that propelled it to be made, just like any other documentary. You're never going to find a documentary team heading out to answer some question that they know nothing about, that they have no context over. They are heading out to find the answers, most likely, that best align with their worldview or what they already believe to know is the truth. The question with this one is, is it going to piss the other side off so much that they're going to make a counter documentary? Will they have enough video footage and audio clips and evidence like this movie did to back up what it's saying and back up its own arguments? I think time will tell. Now, I said that I wasn't going to lean one way or the other, but I do have to call something out that's going to sound like I'm leaning in a certain direction, but I can't proceed with the review without saying it like it is. This is a very anti-Trump movie. <laughs> it's just what it is. It's like Transformers is a very anti-Megatron movie. It, 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 Trump is set up to be the big baddie, the villain, the antagonist of this movie. I was honestly thinking about going with Thanos with my analogy, but Thanos at least had a backstory and we had some sympathy toward him, which is a lot more than I could say they give Trump here. And with Trump being the villain of this movie, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. Remember, I'm the guy in the middle. I'm the guy that believes that both sides are right and both sides are wrong. And it's just, why can't we just come together? I just don't get that. But this movie does not allow for conversation or debate. And I totally get that if this were a pro-Trump movie, it also would not allow for conversation or debate. There was some footage in this movie that was from the pandemic of 1918, which I really enjoyed seeing. It was so cool to see these people walk around with face masks just like we are. That's just something I never would have thought to Google on my own. It was really neat to see that. Although there's one black and white clip where the guy is standing in front of a crowd and then he just like, as if on cue, just faints and falls back. If you watch carefully, you can see like one of the guys behind him smirking like they were staging the whole thing. So anything political is bound to be a he said, she said thing. OK, the finger pointing, the name calling, the other guys are always the bad guys. OK, no matter what. And with that in mind, this is a highly politicized documentary. But the thing that few people seem to grasp, and this just might be my soapbox for a second, but we, the common people, the commoners, will never know the truth of what's going on behind closed doors in governmental institutions. We're never going to know the truth on either side. It's all about what's presented to us. And it's all about whether we trust who's presenting it to us. And do they even get the right information? Are they getting the truth? It's a trickle-down system. And that's just why I don't take sides. That's why I'm not going to say whether this movie was super awesome and it's evidence and it's, you know, it's findings and all this stuff because you can really paint a picture any way you want. I'm one of those people who isn't that fun to talk politics with because in the end, I'm always going to come across and say, I don't know. And guess what? You don't either.
I mean, really, if anything, this movie should teach us patience. Because the day after they wrapped production, Trump tested positive. A month after that, they had the elections, which I think, now that we know the results of the elections, this could have elevated the ending of this movie to be a little bit more high-spirited. Not that I'm against downer endings. I love a sad, bitter ending just like the next guy. But let's consider that this is taking place in the real world. And maybe as a country, as a people, as film goers, we really want to see some more positivity in this day and age. Writing this movie was a challenge. Watching a historical documentary is a different experience because then I'm completely divorced from the events and much of the information is likely going to be news to me. But with this movie, this is something I've lived through and I've followed for the most part all year long. So there was really no new information to be gained by watching this movie. So then I have to ask myself, would this be a good candidate to go into some sort of time capsule to be dug up a thousand years from now? Like Breakfast Club. If you were to dig up Breakfast Club, that would pretty much sum up what the 80s was like, right? Would this movie sum up or characterize 2020? Does it encapsulate most of life in 2020 within a two-hour movie? Does it give the feel of what it was like to be here? Does it show all walks of life? And the answer is no. I've got to bring up one of the earliest lines in this movie, and it was brought up in the movie as a complaint, even though it's the thesis of the whole movie. And that line goes, politics got in the way of science. That's how I feel about this movie. Politics got in the way of showing what life in 2020 was really like. Sure, this is about bad decisions being made at the top, but how did that affect everybody else globally, if not in the country of the United States? And I get that this was meant to highlight the alleged damage the Trump administration caused, but that just made this film not only feel so much smaller than it needed to be, but it just turned it into another Michael Moore bash fest. As a movie, as a documentary, it's just dull and unmemorable. And maybe it would be crazy and exciting to someone who's been living inside all year long. Or under a rock. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't think people are quarantining under rocks. So I'm going to give this movie a 5 out of 10. Because I wasn't swayed to agree with them more than I did or did not going in. My eyes weren't opened up in any way. And there really wasn't any standout footage that really made me sit up and go, wow, or huh. It was a movie that perpetuated what I already knew the world was saying about itself and the world that I was living in. And it more or less felt like an angry relative telling the same story they tell every year at Thanksgiving with no amount of charm and really no charisma. And that brings us to the conclusion of my review for Totally Under Control. I'd like to thank you for watching. You can find more of my work on Filmbook. That's film-book.com. Just search for Andrew Toy. And you can also find more of my movie reviews on my YouTube channel, Andrew and Sarah Beth Toy, where I talk about movies and she sort of tolerates it. And you'll find that link in the description below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up down below, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to get alerts for upcoming videos. Also, if you disagree with my review, leave your thoughts down below. If we agreed with everything, we would have nothing to talk about. And please also consider becoming one of our patrons on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Your support helps us tremendously. We will create more engaging content for you in the future. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.